Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our weekly series. For those of you that have been tuning in for Brain Health Month, very happy to introduce our next speaker, and we think you'll really enjoy this session. As a lot of you know, every year since 2018, the Howe Foundation has interviewed brain health experts, not just from Florida, but around the country. This interview today is part of our 2024 series, where we've been talking with our nonprofit partners, expert clinicians, and program participants. And what we want to do is show our community how medical grade hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which we call HBOT in the industry or HBO, can contribute to healing the invisible wounds of war, namely traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. And if you look at the latest statistics from the Department of Defense, they estimate that over 400,000 service members have sustained mild TBIs alone since the start of the global war on terror. So that's just mild concussion or TBIs. So the need for high quality evidence-based treatments to save and improve the lives of our veterans is never more urgent than now. And we know that our community is keenly aware of this need. So in that spirit, we're broadcasting our interviews one day a week for the whole month of March. Some of you have already tuned in to some of these interviews. And if you have, you've heard a little more about our student athletes and their needs in the field of head injury. So we're kind of switching gears to more fully celebrate Brain Health Month by including our veterans. And what we really wanna do is get what we consider to be really life-saving information out to our veterans and those who care for them, their families, their clinicians, and their communities. I'm Gabby, I'm the Howe Foundation Veteran Coordinator, and Howe Foundation is in really good company in this fight to address the invisible wounds that our service members experience. Many of us feel that we're addressing really important gaps in health care and health knowledge left by the VA and the Department of Defense medical systems. These gaps are nowhere more evident than in the field of hyperbaric medicine, as I've experienced, and I know our guest has experienced that as well, due to a lack of knowledge and sometimes even misinformation about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, almost no veterans or service members are able to receive this life-saving treatment for their TBIs and their PTSD under either VA or DOD funding. We've been really lucky to work with a number of nonprofit organizations around the country who are working to bring this life-saving modality to the veterans who need it the most. One of our dearest partners in this effort is HBOT for Heroes, led by the incredible Christy Andrews, who's here with us today, and she's graciously agreed to join us and have a short chat about how her experience helping veterans has impacted this community and to talk more about why this is such a critical need right now for our nation's finest. Less than a year ago, Christy transitioned from her role as a marketing director and veteran treatment coordinator at the HBOT clinic some of you are familiar with called Extavita to the north of us down here in Florida. And she's transitioned to the role of development manager for HBOT for Heroes. HBOT for Heroes is a young 501c3 nonprofit organization based in Raleigh, North Carolina, and they're supporting veterans to receive free, completely free, hyperbaric oxygen therapy or HBOT treatment at the Extavita RTP clinic. And we're gonna make sure that everybody has the link to their organization, their website. We encourage everyone to visit them, see how you can better support their mission, especially if in your, you're in the Raleigh area or any of the Carolinas, they're doing really life-changing work up there. Christy herself is unwaveringly dedicated to restoring the brain health of American heroes through HBOT, providing a sanctuary of healing and hope for veterans grappling with the debilitating symptoms of TBIs and PTSD. So quite an intro, very fitting. Christy, welcome. Thank you for being here and what you're doing to serve my fellow veterans. I'd like to start by inviting you to tell our audience a little more about how you got involved with this really important work and more about your organization, HBOT for Heroes. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Gabby. It is a pleasure to be here. So I really got involved with HBOT for Heroes um, through the initiatives of what I was doing at Ex Devita. So working at Ex Devita, uh, working as a veteran treatment coordinator, that touched my heart in a way that I don't know if I have ever experienced before. Um, you know, our veterans are so special and they have just not been taken care of or introduced in many ways to all all uh, uh, everything that's available to them and hyperbaric oxygen therapy being um, such a natural way for them to heal it's been a very very um, not only do we have a high efficacy rate but it's been 
I would say it's been very attractive to our veterans, uh, you know, and they like to tell other veterans about it as well. So um, just working with our veterans when we needed a nonprofit, I just kind of scooted right on in there. I was asked to kind of head up that initiative. And uh, that was just a beautiful opportunity to take what I was doing as a veteran coordinator to the next level and just grow, uh, help to grow this this uh, nonprofit and start creating this amazing team where we can do amazing things for our veterans. Thank you so much, Christy. You're absolutely right. This is such a need. Veterans have, have done a lot for us and I'm a little biased because I am a veteran also, but uh, know some really cool folks uh, in your community that you've been able to help. So speaking of the veterans, can you tell us about some of the struggles that you have personally seen them facing when they come to you for help? What are they really looking for when they get to you guys? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, they're looking for hope. Yeah. When our veterans come to us, they're looking for hope. I will tell you that, uh, you know, hyperbaric oxygen ther therapy is probably never the first place <laughs> that they go. Um, it tends to be one of, I wouldn't say the last, but it tends to be one of those things where we have many of them who say they've tried everything and they come to us very biased uh, in the fact that they're like, nothing has ever worked to help uh, ease my symptoms of TBIs and PTSD. Uh, this is not going to work, you know, but, but they they come to us because they also understand they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. They're not paying for it. We, as a nonprofit, are paying for their treatments. We do give our veterans 40 free treatments of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So, uh, so they do come to us, you know, to, with that hope. Um, what they're really looking for, I would say main, the big picture of it is relief from inflammation. Because when we really look at it all, that is what is carrying that burden for them with their their TBIs and their PTSD. Uh, you know, we have uh, veterans that come to us from the Vietnam era that, you know, we're dealing with chronic pain and arthritis and they just mm -hmm. want to feel better. They want to have a clearer mind. They want to feel better. They sure. And that is um, a huge part of, of the suicide rate that we're seeing. Um, you know, our veterans that uh, take their lives, uh, the latest report actually just came out from the VA. It was like 50 something percent of them. Um, the highest rate was, was chronic pain. So pain relief is a big one here. And that fits right into that um, PTSD uh, and the TBI relief as well. Absolutely. You know, as a veteran patient of the VA and, you know, having worked in this space as, as you all have, We've seen some of these challenges these vets are facing and the VA is constantly coming out with new suicide interventions and big plans and so is the Department of Defense, but they're still falling short when you look at the data and really meeting that need and saving lives, right? And we've both seen clinicians in, in both systems that are, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, unfamiliar with hyperbaric or they have misinformation about it, but really what it comes down to is chronic inflammation, like you said, and breaking that inflammatory cycle, not just for pain, but neuroinflammation leading to cognitive issues, mental health issues, and all of that. And I wish we had more time to talk about really that that uh, pathophysiology, because that's what a lot of people want to know is how does this really work? Where is the magic in this? Um, because sometimes it does seem like magic, right? When we have veterans say this, this saved my life. So maybe in a in a future session, we'll, we'll grab you and your clinicians and come back for that. Uh, oh, but absolutely. Yeah, we, we'd love that. And I know some of the viewers would too. Can you tell us why do veterans seem attracted to hyperbaric oxygen as opposed to the meds, you know, the migraine injections, that kind of stuff? What is it, if you could summarize it, and how is it different than those other traditional treatments that they're getting? Sure, absolutely. So I would say that um, this is from what I hear from our veterans who come to us, is they are so tired of having pills poured down their throat. Um, that is probably the biggest, uh, the common thing that I hear right. all the time is I go to the VA and they want to do nothing but pour more pills down my throat. And then they want to give me another pill to counteract the side effects of that pill. And, <laughs> you know, and then we're dealing with suicidal ideations that is a side effect of these pills. So it's like we're going in this vicious circle and we're not going anywhere. So they love the fact that hyperbaric oxygen therapy is natural. It is non-invasive. It is nothing more than a combination of oxygen and pressure. Two of the most natural things that we could ever have here you know, on Earth. 
Yeah. That's right. That's right. And it's and it's not a new therapy. Um, you know, when you dive into hyperbarics, you'll learn that it's been around for over a hundred years. There's nothing new about it. It is probably the most um, effective and powerful way that we can combat inflammation in our body naturally. So they love the fact that is that is natural. You're not giving me more pills. You're putting me in a chamber, which is fine. Um, you know, we have multi-place chambers. Uh, well, we work with the clinic Extavita, so that's where they have multi-place chambers there. Um, and at Extavita, they're, they love the fact, too, that they can go in with other veterans. So having that multi-place chambers, having the, uh, when I say multi-place, I'll explain really quickly what that means, is it means that we have a chamber that can accommodate multiple people at once. So we don't have a chamber that um, you just lay down in. Uh, that's, you know, a solo chamber. It's a monoplace chamber. Uh, our chambers do have like, they can accommodate like eight to 12, 12 max. So they love that camaraderie too. They can bring their spouse in with them and do that treatment. Uh, you know, 85 minutes is a chance for them to, to watch a show, relax. And, um, and again, we do give 40 free treatments. So we do like our veterans to finish that program within about, uh, you know, a, about four four months is ideal. Um, but yeah, I would just say that's that's the big thing is that it is very different than what they're going to get from the VA. I think the VA is starting to dabble a little bit more in acupuncture and, you know, some of these more alternative healing. Uh, yeah. But we haven't quite got there yet with, with hyperbarics. Uh, so they, they look at outside sources. And when I would tell you, when our veterans find something that they like and that works, uh, they tell their, their friends about it and oh, they sure. spread the word. And uh, and yeah, so we've been pretty busy uh, with our veterans coming to us and, and us and just so blessed, you know, that we can help them. Yeah, that's great. I, I didn't even think about the camaraderie aspect. So uh, at Howe Foundation, we partner with a number of chambers. Some are multi-place, as Christy mentioned, that's where you're putting a couple people or even up to 10 or 12 people into a chamber at once, giving them all the same kind of treatment. Uh, and then with monoplace chambers, which we also partner with, that's where you have one person in each chamber and people kind of think of the old like dive tubes with no windows and they're scared of it, but the industry has come a long way. So now you've got the nice, big, roomy, clear acrylic tubes, and we can always help people with claustrophobia and anxiety and some of those other things, which our veterans have. So uh, we work through it and, and Exavitas, they're, they're expert clinicians on that and, and getting people through that stage and kind of feeling comfortable with it. And hyperbaric in general, it is so appealing to veterans because no drugs, no painful procedures. You know, we had a veteran come to us recently who was getting 10 to 12 injections a week in his neck and his spine. I mean, yeah. I, I don't get those injections, but I can't imagine that feels good. And yeah. you know, he was desperate for something else. We have veterans come through the VA that have no idea what they're taking or why they're taking it. And their clinicians don't remember or know what they're taking, right? So if we can avoid all that or put a stop to that by putting someone in the chamber, we really see big results. And that kind of leads me to, me to my next question for you, Christy. What kind of results have you guys seen in the veterans that you've treated? And what do your clinicians think about that? What are they seeing? Yeah, sure. So um, so we actually do get some state funding. And as part of that state funding, we are required to uh, basically provide uh, those, those numbers. Uh, so we provide a legislative report. And our first legislative report did show a 95% efficacy rate. So our 95% efficacy rate is very specific to eliminating or reducing the symptoms of TBI or PTSD. So, um, so you know, everybody pretty much kind of gets something out of it. Um, they're going to get some sort of benefit. Um, I would say, you know, if we had like 100 veterans that came through our door, maybe five to 10 of them might say, oh, I didn't really do anything for me, but it didn't make me any worse. And for that, I'm thankful. <laughs> um, I'll take it. But rest of them, we're going to have veterans who say, you know, it it literally saved my life. Right. It turned everything. Uh, everybody's so different. I and mean, there's no one thing that's going to work for everybody. But just having that, um, 
that kind of efficacy rate and knowing that it works and that it is natural. Um, yeah, our clinicians are amazing over at Extavita. They are, we, you know, I think no matter what you do is your team, you know, that when you have an amazing team and you pull it all together, no one person can do it together, you know, can do it by themselves. So we have to do it together. We have to work together. So our clinicians, um, they are going to be very involved in our veterans from the very beginning, as far as not only with a consultation, but we're going to do an ANM test with our veterans as well. They do an ANM test with a cognitive test. Um, that is really where that efficacy rate is going to come from. That's a lot of it. From the beginning and the end, we're going to do that same AM test. Um, so they're going to be there every step of the way. And also, of course, there's reporting um, as, you know, suicide reporting, and that's going to also go deep into the depression, you know, part of it. So that's all part of that as well um, on the suicide rating. And so they're going to be a big part of that as well, looking at, you know, where you were when you started and where are you now? So, um, you know, are we just continuing to go in the right direction? And I have talked to some veterans who, uh, you know, are, are, are pretty bad shape come, coming to see us. Um, if we do get, we do have uh, several, uh, you know, just psychiatrists uh, who are aware of our program. And uh, we're like, you know, I want him or her to try this. I think that it's going to be a good way for them to combat some of the things that they're they're going through. And so that that's kind of been interesting because, you know, we get them in right away. You know, if we're having suicidal ideations, there's no wait list. We work very hard to get them in. Um, we've even done it same day. Extavita has been amazing with that. Um, getting them in same day even and just starting it. And so it was really interesting when I did talk to one of our vets and um, I was like, well, how are you feeling? He's like, uh, you know, it's like I'm feeling a, a little bit better and I'm not feeling worse. And for that, I am very, very thankful. Okay. And I think by the end of it, uh, he was he was feeling pretty darn good. And he, he, he was he actually went back to his therapist and said, for the first time in a long time, I have hope. And, uh, and sometimes that's all that we can ask for, you know what I mean, is, is hope for the future. And that's absolutely what they're, what they're coming to us for and what they're finding. That's great, Christy. I think it's so important to collect these results. And veterans were really good at talking and word of mouth, right? Because I tend to trust another veteran who's gone through something versus the VA telling me to do something, right? Or my doctor telling me. That's just how we are as veterans. We're a tight-knit community and we can sometimes be closed off. But hey, if my battle buddy says this works, I think you should try it. I'm probably going to listen to them. So we hear that feedback in the clinics and our chambers and with our veterans, just like you do. But the I think the challenge has been collecting that and packaging it in a way that the state legislatures and the VA, the federal level, and even at the state levels can really dive into it, see that this really does have results, uh, positive results. They are valid results. And um, getting legitimacy for that is quite a challenge. So I know there's a lot of work being done uh, in, in the Carolinas and a lot of work being done in Virginia, which is where we've treated a lot of veterans. And even in Florida, we're working with a lot of partners to, to kind of get this work to the state legislature and the folks that can make decisions and allocate some funding to this. Uh, I know there's a big effort right now in Tampa to start getting veterans in and do some good research and get some great results and get that back to the legislature to show them that this works and convince some of the sticklers that, you know, this isn't uh, alternative medicine as it's been considered by the VA in the past. This is just evidence-based medicine. It works. It's very safe. And as you said, if it even gives someone hope, if it gives them that 1% shift, I'll take that, right? That's right. Better than nothing. So absolutely. So, you know, there's all this great work being done and there's a long way to go. I think everyone in the community agrees on that. So let's talk just a little bit about that. What do you guys up there, what do you personally still think is missing in this space regarding TBI PTSD treatment? How do you think we as nonprofits can continue to fight for support and really bottom line, treat more veterans? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, our veterans what I hear is they, they don't know all their options. I think that's the biggest thing is that they don't, they didn't know that hyperbarics was even a thing. They've never heard of it before. Um, they didn't know they could come and they could get free treatments. They don't know about organizations like mine or yours who, you know, in many ways too, there's so many other things other than just hyperbarics that are out there. 
And I think that is the biggest missing link of whether it's the VA or wherever they're going is literally understanding all options that are out there that pills is not the only option. And so, you know, a lot of us, we, we listen to our doctors. We trust our doctors. If our doctor says to do something, we do it. And so a lot of them just don't know any different. They don't, they're only going to the VA. They're only knowing what their doctor's prescribing. They're, they're following the rules because that is what you, you all do, right? In the military, you know, we're following the rules. We're, we're doing what the doctor says we're, we're supposed to do, but we're not getting any better. We're in some ways, you know, we're even getting worse. And, um, and it's not necessarily anybody's fault in some ways. It's just a matter that they don't know the options. And they don't know that this is an option that they can they can pursue. Um, I love the collaboration that we have. I love the collaboration that we have with so many other nonprofits as well across the entire country. Um, and that is, I think, where we can always continue to do better and where we will win this fight as we continue to work together and help our veterans is having these partnerships and these collaborations. And mm-hmm. I know recently um, I sent somebody to you because they called me and I didn't, I couldn't really help them that much. They weren't in North Carolina. They were looking for some other options. And I was like, call Gabby, you know, and that's Thank that type, of, that. <laughs> we did that's connect. That type that's of, of relationship that we need to have. Oh, that's what it's about. Yeah. That's I think those are, great marching orders for for all of us to continue to spread awareness, not just for veterans, but for their clinicians, right? Whether it's VA, community care, something completely different, making sure people know the benefit and they know that this is evidence-based and and it is life-saving. Thank you so much for sharing all this. The program that you all have put together in North Carolina, it's so impressive. There's a lot of other impressive groups doing similar work around the country, but we're very happy to partner with you all. And I think, as you said, the goal now is not to compete or, you know, fight for who's going to get the big check, right, to do this service. It's all of us working together because we all have different state legislatures that we're fighting, really. And we have different VA systems that we're fighting in DOD and Army bases and Air Force bases and all these different things. Uh, So it's really collaborating together. And I think that's another big challenge for the nonprofit space. There's so many people in groups that want to help veterans right? And provide evidence-based therapies, not just hyperbaric. There's movement in the psychedelic world, right? And there's movement in acupuncture and all these uh, yoga and things like that. Um, But I think what sets hyperbaric apart is that it is a well-established modality, like you said. It's been used for wound care. It's been used for many other indications. And now we just need to get the buy-in for this indication. It's very much legitimate. So so thanks for what you're doing again. And, And to any of our partners out there, we're all happy to partner together. It's, you know, we said in the army, it's one team, one fight, right? So Christy, is there anything else you want the audience to know about this treatment or about our veterans or about what you do? I would say, um, just, just try it. I mean, if, if speaking to any veteran out there, I would say, try it because any veteran that if you were to talk to them that went through our program, your program, any hyperbaric program, they would tell you the same thing, that you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. It is such a non-invasive um, therapy. I mean, it is, it, again, it's oxygen and pressure, and it has the potential to change your life for the better. So there are a lot of organizations out there just like ours that will pay for the veteran to do this so that you do not have to pay out of pocket. So if you're in North Carolina, you know, we are a very good option. We do work with the Exavita Clinic in Raleigh. Um, if you are not in North Carolina, there are a lot out there and you're welcome to call me even, call, call Gabby. Uh, we know a lot of people out there um, who can help you. So it's connecting all the dots so that we can help our veterans and, and, and save, save lives. Absolutely, thank you so much, Christy. To, to sum it up, just dive in. Dive <laughs> in, I love it. Dive in, okay. Hey, so, we're in the the time. so, you know, I've done it, other veterans. Take the done. dive. Take the dive, right? <laughs> right. And, and see where the healing begins. So absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Christy. And we'll make sure, like I said, all the viewers have your information. We're all happy to partner together. So let us both know how we can help. Thanks for your time, Christy. 
Thank you, Gabby. I appreciate you having me. My pleasure.